Hi everyone, I am Adrian Van Kieran with Tai Chi Healing Energies and welcome to what is apparently our 17th socially distanced or socially quarantined session together. That means that we have had 16 other sessions, which is the equivalent of four months. So for some of you, it has been four to six months since I have been able to see you in any of my physical in-person classes. I can't tell you all how much I'm looking forward to everyone being comfortable enough to come out, whether you come outside or however it looks like, but so that we can practice together again. In the meantime, however, as long as we are up, moving, and practicing, that is what really matters. So let's go ahead and start off by getting nice and grounded. So we want to make sure we're open and rounded and yet soft through all the joints, including those leg joints. We're not ever going to lock the legs. We also want to make sure that the spine is nice and straight with that tailbone gently tucked underneath. The spine is, or because the spine is nice and straight, the head top is rising and the weight is sinking evenly through both feet. We're going to go ahead, allow the arms to float up in front of us. They're going to extend, come back, and float back down. So we want to get that chi energy moving, so we're going to pull it from the lower dantian up the back. It's going to go over the head. We allow it to fill the arms, bring that energy back, and let it sink back down. Do this a couple more times, keeping it nice, relaxed concentrating on that softness and also on that chi flow. So again, bring that chi energy up the back and over the head, allow it to fill the arms, bring it back, and return it to that lower dantian. From here, we're going to bring the hands up the center of the body, palms rotate overhead, and arms sink very softly to the sides. Remember to stay light and open through the joints as we do this. So again, arms are going to come up, palms rotate overhead, and arms sink slothfully to the sides. Let's get that chi energy involved. So as the arms raise, the chi spreads to fill the whole body, and then as the arms come down, it returns gently to that dantian. So one last time with this. Arms up, chi spreads to fill the body, and as they fall, that chi returns to the lower dantian. From here, sweep the arms out to the sides and bring the hands down the center of the body. Same thing with that chi energy with this. We're going to let the chi spread to fill the body as the arms come up. And as the arms sink down, that chi returns to the dantian. So we want to feel that nice opening here and then a gentle closing as the arms come down. Do one more of those. Good. With this next exercise, we're going to do the one where the arms are going to come up the center of the body. We'll shift all of our weight into one side and bend to follow. I really want you to pay attention to the sensation of that weight dropping all the way into one side because that's something we're going to work with a little bit today. Just also keep in mind for all of this that I am mirroring you. So we're going to let the hands come up. This time the fingers lace together. We are going to go ahead, drop all the weight into the left side, bend to follow, then in one motion over to the right side, return to center, and bring the arms down. Do that a few more times, keeping things nice and light. So again, arms up. We drop all the weight into the left side, bend to follow, then over to that right side, back to center, and down. Look for the sensation of, as you're doing this, when you're bending and dropping that weight into your left side, look for the right side to be empty, and then over here, when the weight's on the right, look for the left side to be empty or weightless. Let's do that one last time, just like that. So again, drop all the weight into the left. Notice the emptiness of the right. Then over to the other side. And down. Very nice. The next thing we're going to do is actually go straight into our breathing. 
I want you to pay attention, not really pay attention, what I really like you to look for in this is relaxation. At this point, especially if you have followed the majority of the other 16 sessions, then you probably have a good handle on this breathing. So go ahead, allow it to make you nice and relaxed today. Just as a reminder, stay nice and open through all the joints and soft. At hang, we're going to take air in, gently pull the stomach in. At ha, we let it relax back out. I am not going to talk you through this. We are simply going to do the breathing. As I said, you're probably fairly familiar with it by now. So we will go ahead and start. Take just a moment to make sure you feel nice and grounded. And hang, inhale, and ha. having done that breathing sequence. If you were able to stay light on the feet, you might have picked up on and noticed those small weight shifts that we've talked about before. In Tai Chi, we do a lot of shifting the weight back and forth. This is to help unify the body and to help it work together. A great example of that is here when the arms float up in front. For my left arm to go up, my weight shifts that little bit to the right. And then here, I'm back to center. 
here, my weight goes over to the left to help drive my right hand up and vice versa. So this weight shift is actually the next thing that we're really going to focus on, which means the next or focus of this video is actually going to be the bare warm-up exercise. If you are one of my students, you are probably wondering why you have not seen me do bears in any of these videos as yet, because they are the foundation of Tai Chi. I can only say that to a large degree, um, they are, while they are very simple, because there is so much going on inside of you, um, I've been hesitant to teach them on video just because I'm getting less questions and less feedback on the video than I normally do in my classes. But I think this is super important, so we're just going to go with it and see how it goes. I'm going to demonstrate bears briefly, talk a little bit about what we're doing, and then we'll go ahead and get started. So a bear looks like this. It's a simple shifting the weight back and forth from a grounded, rooted, or striding stance and allowing the hands to come up to tap. What is important to know is that we're going to, for this, kick the hips square to the front of the room so we are not turning from the waist like this. This is what we're not doing. What we are doing is simply shifting the weight back and forth. So to get us started, I'm going to ask that everybody get nice and grounded in your horse riding stance. Pay attention to your feet. Pay attention to the spine as the axis of the body. It's going to be very important in this. And then really relax and be soft through the upper body and the arms. What I want the focus to be on is shifting the weight from foot to foot. So we'll be weighted on one side, shift the weight over. It's almost like a seesawing motion. And this motion really needs to originate from the feet. The reason for that is if it does not originate from the feet, we all fall into this trap of shifting our weight like this. Now I'm simply sticking my hips from side to side. My body is not working together. However, when I am shifting my weight back and forth from foot to foot, then that lets the whole body work together. The other important thing to note, you notice when I'm doing these bears, I'm coming up and tapping one hand in the front. It's a lightly closed fist. The other hand, turning my back on you for just a moment, is an open hand tapping over the tailbone. So as we shift the weight back and forth, we're also switching hands. The side that you are quote unquote weighted on is the side that you're tapping on the front one. That means that if I have my weight on my right side, my right hand is tapping in front while the left hand taps in the back. Then when I shift my weight over to the left, that left hand comes up to tap in front. When I'm back on the right, the right hand's in front, left hand's in front. This is important to notice for yourself. I will also say almost across the board, we all do bears backwards when we start. This is because our body is very out of balance. So these bears can help bring them back into balance even though they feel really weird and slightly awkward at first. Just being completely honest there. I will also say that I have not had one student yet that has really taken these bears, practiced them, and not fallen in love with them. So there's kind of a learning curve. You learn the choreography, you go through this, ugh, I don't want to do these bears, they're not fun stage. You start to relax into it after that and realize there's a lot going on in these bears. Then you fall absolutely in love with them, and if you come to any of my classes, any of um, my outdoor events, Typically, when we're standing around waiting for class to start, we're all standing there doing bears, just because it is a very relaxing thing to do. So, again, let's go ahead, do these. You're grounded in horse riding stance. We're going to start off very slowly. I'm going to ask everybody, shift your weight over to your right, bring your right hand up to tap, your left hand is tapping in the back. Shift your weight over to the left, left side comes up to tap. Then right, right hand taps in front, and left. So now we somewhat know the choreography. It's about practicing and relaxing into it a little bit. So go ahead, put your awareness and mind on your feet. Make sure you're shifting the weight back and forth from foot to foot. Allow the hands to stay soft and come up to tap. This 
point, I want you to attempt to get lost in this motion. So just shift your weight back and forth and don't overthink it. Um, as we do this, and yes, this is a trick to attempt to get you doing as many of these as possible, I'm going to keep running my mouth about the benefits of bears. So when we are nice and grounded in our horse riding stance, which we are now, we know that we are helping to pull the Earth's electromagnetic frequency into our body. When we are shifting our weight back and forth from side to side, that helps to amplify that. If you're a technical person, it's almost like pistons in an engine working. It helps draw that energy into the body. Then, because we are nice and grounded, chi flow is also an automatic response of doing these bears. So right now, whether you feel it or not, know it's happening or not, if you are grounded and shifting your weight back and forth, your chi energy is being pushed up your spine, over the head, and around the front of the body. This is called the small heavenly circle that we have spoken about in previous videos. That chi flow is very important and is thought to be the basis of a lot of uh, health benefits. So that is very important for this. Okay. I will also just mention briefly that the more bears you do, the more relaxed you are. Right now, you are probably still thinking, am I placing my hands in the correct spot? Am I fully shifting my weight? Am I doing this correctly? That's perfectly normal. The more bears we do, the more we relax into them. On average, I ask my students to work their way up to doing roughly 500 bears a day. The way we count them is one, two, three, and so on. The reason that number is so high is because for the first probably at least 200 we do, we're stiff. We're wondering, am I placing my hands correctly? Am I shifting my weight? Am I doing this right? It's not until we do more of them, our weight drops down, we relax fully, and then we really start getting the benefits. So that's why that number is so high. However, I'm going to suggest you start small. Try to aim for maybe 100 and slowly work your way up. Now, because you've been doing enough of these, let's come to a gentle stop. So take your time coming to a stop with those. If you need to, go ahead, step it out, shake it out, whatever bends, stretches you need to do. So those were bears in horse riding stance. Now we're going to do bears in bow and arrow stance. Let me quickly demonstrate from the side what I don't want you to do. When we get into our bow and arrow stance, we need to make sure, of course, the tailbone is tucked. We also need to make sure, since the dantean is the most important part of the body, that when we shift our weight back and forth, the dantean is staying at an even level. So if my foot is too far forward, as soon as I shift my weight forward, my waist drops down. That tells me my stance is too wide and I need to narrow it. So then when I come front to back, my waist stays at that even level. That tells me my stance is okay. The other thing to be careful of is when we come forward, we are not leaning forward. When we come back, we are not leaning back. That spine stays the straight upright axis of the body. It's gonna be a very small front to back movement, keeping that spine straight and the head top lifting. One of my students, Carrie, if you see this, I miss you, uh, told me that the best advice I gave her with these bears is telling her that the spine acts as a maypole and the arms are the ribbons that flutter around it. That helps her to keep that nice softness through the arms. With these, we're going to do, I want to say, four different types of bears. We're going to do the regular bear where we're tapping the dantean in the front, the tailbone with the other hand. We're going to do shoulder bears, where we're going to take a very light fist, come up and tap the shoulders. Think of these as love taps. You're taking healing chi with every tap of your hand to uh, the area that we're tapping. And I will say that it's not the same type of love tap my mom gave me when I was being a smart aleck upside the head. These are actual healing love taps. After we do these shoulder bears, next up is going to be what I call upper shoulder bears. 
Then we'll have open hands coming up and tapping the front, or tapping the upper shoulder like that. Then I'm going to say waist bears. At that point, I want you to completely relax your arms. Let them hit as they need to. So that's what we're going to be doing next. Take a couple of moments, myself included, to find your nice grounded position here in horse riding stance. Once we have that, we are all going to shift our weight over to the right, step forward with our left foot, pick that back toe up and adjust it to a 45 degree angle, and get into bow and arrow stance. So check in with the body here. Is your head top rising? Is your tailbone tucked underneath? Are you open and round? So to check our stance and make sure our Dante in is not going to drop down when we shift our weight forward, we're going to go front, back, turn very gently to the right, and turn back to center. This is to make sure we're secure in our stance. We're going to do this two more times. So again, it's front, back, gentle turn, back to center. One more time. Front, back, turn. This time, we'll shift the weight forward, come up to tap with that forward hand, and back. Front, back. Front, back. Now that we've got that motion a little bit together, we'll relax into it. And again, here we're coming straight front to back. Don't overthink it. If it's easy enough to have the hand that's in front as a closed fist, great. If not, don't worry about it. Focus on the motion and know the rest will come in time. And again, with this, it's just a straight front to back. I'm going to very quickly turn to the side so you can see how I'm doing this. We're going to do shoulder bears now. So bring those hands up to lightly tap the shoulders with a closed fist. Turning back to front now. Count these bears the same way we count the other ones as well. With this being one, two, three, and so on. We do upper shoulder bears now. So that open hand coming up to tap the upper shoulder. One thing, too, is don't overthink where the hands are tapping. If you know, ideally, my hands are going to tap here, in time, that's what will happen. Some of us might have things going on in our shoulders that's keeping our momentum a little bit um, less than what we would like it to be. So don't worry about that. Don't try to stress or push through it. Allow these things to naturally be broken down. So waist bears next. And again, with this one, we just really relax those arms, allow them to tap when and as they need to, not overthinking it. Because this is more for learning purposes than doing purposes, so we'll go ahead, come to a gentle stop with these. And as you're ready, we will step back, take a moment, get yourself nice and grounded in horse riding stance again. So just take your time, feel that weight sink down into the ground. Then we'll go ahead, all together, shift our weight over to the left, step forward with that right foot, adjusting the back toe to a 45 degree angle. Make sure you're uh, in stance here, your tailbone is tucked underneath, you're open and rounded, you have that nice space between the, the feet. Once we feel secure in our stance from the back foot, we'll shift our weight front, back, turn gently this time to the left, and then back to center. If you felt that waist drop down, that's an indication we need to shorten the stance a little bit. If our stance feels good, then we'll go ahead again, go front, back, gentle turn, and let's do one more of those. Front, back, turn, back to center, and then we'll just come front, tap. So front, back, 
front, back, front, back. Again, don't overthink it. Make sure the weight shift is originating from the feet. And then you're super soft and relaxed through the upper body. The body knows and your mind knows you want to tap in certain locations. Then we just kind of need to allow that to happen. So shoulder bears now. Typically what I tell my more experienced students is when I want them to do the shoulder bears or the upper shoulder bears, I ask them to put more chi into their arms to help facilitate that lifting. So that way we're not using our muscles so much, but really trying to use the chi as well. Upper shoulder bears. And I will ask too, when you're really practicing these on your own, don't expect to feel this way. This is your first time doing bears. But really look for the body being unified together, especially the upper shoulder bears and even the regular shoulder bears. It's a lot easier to feel that connection between how you're shifting your weight and the hands are coming up to tap. So look for that yourself as your experience with these build. And then we'll do waist bears. Again, not overthinking it. The arms are completely relaxed. You're shifting the weight back and forth. The spine is staying upright. And that's the axis of the body. The fact that the spine is moving back and forth and the arms are so relaxed is what's allowing them to come up to tap. That and my intention being that that's what's going to happen. Do a few more of these. And come to a gentle stop. And as you're ready, we'll go ahead, step back. If you need to shake it out, whatever you need to do, please feel free to do so. Also remember, if you spend longer in horse riding stance or bow and arrow stance than normal trying to uh, practice these bears, don't forget, if you need to stop, rub those hands together to accumulate that healing chi energy. Take it to the hip later, whatever you need to do to help your body. So, hopefully these bears felt okay to you. Hopefully you didn't automatically hate them. I will willingly admit that when I started taking Tai Chi classes, bears were my least favorite thing to do. I didn't see the point in them. I didn't want to do them. They just weren't fun. And then I fell in love with them. I think for me, one of the reasons I fell in love with them was realizing how much of it is the body's natural way of moving or being. That epiphany kind of hit me because I was sitting at the park one day and I was watching a lady stand there and she was holding her baby. She was perfectly grounded, she had her tailbone tucked underneath, her spine was nice and straight, she was relaxed and she was rocking that baby back and forth. And it really hit me that when you relax those arms, we're doing the same thing here. We're just rocking ourselves in one level. It really let me see how the, these bears are the body's natural way of wanting to move. It's just that unfortunately, um, expectations and responsibilities and having to do desk work and all of that kind of thing have gotten in the way and make it so the body is less able to move how it wants to. These bears can really help reset the body and get it moving together. Unfortunately, I don't have uh, testimonials that I can show you, only ones I can share with you and with my other students telling me how much they love these bears. One of the questions that I always get with them is, do I have to count them? Again, I ask that you do roughly 500 of them. If you don't want to stand here and count to 500, that's perfectly fine. I know some of us are just automatic counters. We count everything. Other people, not so much. Ideally, these bears will take you about 15 or 20 minutes to do those 500 of them. If you don't want to count, that's perfectly fine. If, however, you find yourself doing these bears and you start wondering, did I start the laundry? 
Do I need to get groceries? Ooh, look, a squirrel. Then I will ask that you please go back to counting to keep your mind on what you're doing. Once you've progressed past the point that this motion be can become almost, and it is a moving meditation, then no, you absolutely don't need to count. Like everything, it's a training process. I know at this point I've given you a good bit of information about these bears. As always, anyone that has any questions or would like more information, any clarification on anything, please don't hesitate to reach out to me through my website, um, email me. Again, send me a video and ask me, am I doing this correctly? I promise you I will respond. Because I also recognize that bears not, might not be everybody's favorite thing and you might not have enjoyed the last few minutes of class, let's end on a nice relaxing note and go through the breathing again. Just because we are so focused on the weight shift with these bears, I will ask that as we go through the breathing again, pay attention to these various weight shifts you're going to find. Listen to your body and let it work together. So take a few moments here. Find your ground here in horse riding stance. Nice, soft, and relaxed, letting that weight sink evenly through the feet. Go ahead and start. Hang. Ha. Hang. Ha. Hang. Ha. of that weight shift. 
the more we do these bears, the more relaxed we are, the softer we are. I want to say the easier it is to help facilitate the rest of our Tai Chi practice. Personally, I do the breathing first, then I do the bears, and then I will do some other different things that you've seen on the, the previous classes. Some of the Fa Chins, some form review, something like that. But I very much encourage you to work with these bears, get to know them, make friends with them, and then as the timing is right, incorporate them into your daily Tai Chi practice. Again, as always, any questions, anything like that, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. Otherwise, I will say stay healthy, and I look forward to seeing everyone as soon as possible. Thank you so much.